Hi friends, welcome to Ufa Studies YouTube channel. Uh, in this video, we are going to discuss about biceps on a high level. Uh, what is bicep? How to install bicep? And then using this bicep, how to create a resource? So that is a main agenda. Let's try to implement that and see how it works. Uh, so in real time, right? Um, you know that, uh, let me explain you this with small example first. So generally, there are various ways using which we can interact with Azure. So let's assume this is Azure. And uh, let's assume what I wanted to do, I wanted to create a resource, okay, create a resource. It can be VM, it can be VM, or it can be maybe data factory resource, some resource, okay. So what are the various ways to create that? One is we can do it via portal from the Azure portal. Then two is using PowerShell we can do it or using Azure CLI. PowerShell and CLI both are commands. So using that also we can do. Then we can make a REST API call also. That REST API call allows us to create the resource in Azure platform. Or we can make use of SDK. That means writing a code C sharp or Python or any specific language because SDKs are available for Azure. We can write our code and that code in turn create our resource on the Azure platform. Or one way is using ARM templates. So what is ARM template means? It's like a big JSON file actually. So in the JSON file, you will have entire configuration of the resource. For example, data factory. Then what is the data factory name? What is the data factory location? You will have that information. And this JSON file, you can either upload into the Azure portal directly that in turn create a resource or this JSON file can be deployed using either PowerShell or Azure CLI. Okay, so this is the general way of doing it. So when you work with Azure ERM templates, that's where the biceps will come into picture actually. Okay, so how I will explain it. So let's go to Azure portal now. This is our Azure portal. And uh, let's assume I want to upload a ERM template to create a resource in the Azure portal. So you need to go to this deploy custom template option. Uh, you can search the same from the Azure portal above search bar as well. Okay. So let me click that deploy a custom template option here. And here when you see you can build your template from the scratch using the editor. That means basically you write a JSON completely or you can let me use this common template which is available create a Windows virtual machine. So I clicked it right now here whatever the options you are seeing here these options like allowing you to fill the details you are not seeing a json here right but when you click this edit template that's where you see actually json there okay so in that json in this json uh, you will configure the details for creating that vm and accordingly vm will get create uh, basically you see uh, this json's right are very lengthy okay in real time when you want to create any particular resource but still uh, if you want to go with the arm approach then you have to write that lengthy json okay you have to write the lengthy json files and that json file you can upload using this upload button okay using this upload button you can upload it and that in turn create a resource or let's assume you have the json file written locally you can execute some powershell commands or from azure cli commands uh, that will in turn deploy this JSON file that this entire ERM template into the Azure platform and you get a Azure resource. So, so far it is fine. But the problem here is, what is the problem here is, the problem here is, uh, let me type like this. So, the JSON, the ERM JSON, which we have to write, it's actually too lengthy, okay. And there is, there will be no syntax. It's not like a programming, right? There won't be any intelligence. There is no syntax. It is very tedious job actually. To simplify this process only, BICIP came into picture. In BICIP, what you do, you write the a code in very few lines, okay? And uh, you get all the intelligence and everything. And then when you build this BICIP, right? When you, when you build this BICIP, then it will, when you build this BICIP, then it will create the ERM template for you automatically. That means the entire JSON file, it will create you automatically. So instead of writing too lengthy ERM template JSON, we are writing a small code in BICIP 
that in turn creates the ARM template and this ARM template can be deployed into the Azure. Okay, so that's how the BICIP will work. So BICIP's main job is to reduce the complexity when you play with the ARM templates. You can create the ARM templates very easily by writing a minimal code. And you no need to convert that to ARM template and deploy actually. You can directly deploy the JSON file also. That will in behind the scenes create say ARM template and then deploy the resource. So for you from the human eye, it is like I created a JSON file with very minimum code and I declared maybe create a data factory resource there. And I deployed that by zip file directly using some commandlets and that created the data factory directly. So you won't see a yeah, JSON at all in the entire picture. Behind the scenes, the BICIP technology will take care of converting that BICIP code into ERM template JSON actually. So let me make sense this by practically showing some examples. The first step will be, we should have BICIPs in our system. Okay, so in my system, I have PowerShell. So let me open PowerShell here. Uh, okay, so PowerShell got opened here and here, right? Uh, first thing is BICIP should be there and the prerequisite for BICIP to have is we should have the Azure CLI. So let's try to write this command az then maybe version. So this command generally should give me the version of the Azure CLI. But you can see that right now it says that I am not able to recognize what you are asking because I don't have Azure CLI installed in my system. The best way to install Azure CLI go to the Edge browser and here search for azure cli installation azure cli install okay so let me open this documentation now let me click this how to install azure cli documentation link and here i can click on install on windows this link uh, this will if i scroll down it will ask me to download the msi file that can help me to install the azure cli in my local I have already downloaded it. Let me go there and uh, in my downloads folder, I have it. So let me show you that folder here. Let me drag and drop the folder file explorer here. And you see that MSI is already available in my system. Let me double click this and try to install this Azure CLI in my system first here. And it will actually open some wizard where we have to click next, next, and it will finish the installation. Okay. Agree this license and hit this install button to start the installation. Cool. Azure CLI installation completed. Let me hit finish. Now let me go back to my PowerShell and find that AZ version and see if this command returns the version this time. Because now I have installed Azure CLI, it should recognize, but for that I have to restart it because it is a previous uh, session. So let me close this. And let me go to the start menu and let me search for PowerShell. And uh, let me open PowerShell 7 here. In PowerShell 7, let's try to check this AZ version. And this time I should see Azure CLI version. You can see that it is telling me that Azure CLI version is 2.6.0. Now I can also check BICIP version as well. Okay. Because along with Azure CLI, it will install BICIP command line as well. So all the BICIP related stuff which needed will automatically get installed along with the Azure CLI. To confirm that, I am trying to see the version of the BICIP and you can see that it shows 0.26, right? So we are good. So now let's try to open Visual Studio code by hitting this code command. And in the Visual Studio code, we are going to create a BICIP file that will actually help you to create the data factory resource using BICIP. Okay, so let me open one folder first here. So I'm clicking open folder and from my system, I will navigate to some folder. I think in my C drive, I have a folder called sample code. Let me select this folder and then I, will, I can start writing the BICIP file code here. Okay, uh, before that, let's go to the extensions and we have to do one thing. We have to install BICIP extension. So in the search bar above, I can search for BICIP. So B-I-C-A-P, C-E-P, okay? So this BICIP extension, which we have to install, let me hit this install button here. 
this should install BICIP extension for the Visual Studio code. So once the installation done, what we'll do, we won't write a ARM JSON code. We will write a BICIP code that will create the data factory. And from that BICIP file, I will show you how to generate the ARM file as well. So you can see that right now installation is in progress. Let's wait for it. BICIP installation successful now. Let me go to the explore button. And now here, let me click new file and let me close this BICIP extension. And maybe I want to create a BICIP called sample.bicep. Okay. So I created a sample.bicep file. And the moment I do that, you can clearly see that this icon for the BICIP files. Okay. So that indicates that it's a BICIP file. Now what I want to do, as I said, I want to create a resource. Okay. So when you type this BICIP, once you have that BICIP extension installed, now when you start typing the code, you should see intelligence as well. So let me type C. When I typing, I should see the intelligence. So for example, if I want to create application insights resort, I can use this note snippet. When I double click that, see automatically it is giving whole BICIP code uh, where I can replace the app insight name, what I want and the location, all other details. And this five to six to seven line of code will actually generate you app insights resort automatically. But the same application insights resource, if you want to create via ARM JSON file, it will be a very lengthy JSON. Okay, so let me practically show you that. The same way how I created this application insights resource here. So let me create a data factory resource, for example. So resource, then data factory. So I'm going to replicate the same syntax. So here we should use the identifier name, like what resource. So data factory resource I want to create. Then here, single quotes. When I say control space, I get intelligence here. And from the intelligence, I can select the options. So I can select this Microsoft data factory, this one, this provider. And then here, I can use this version equals to open flower bracket, close flower bracket. Then control space, name is a mandatory field. And I will tell data factory name maybe OFA studies ADF. 2024-0501 maybe, okay? Then there is one more field called location, which is also mandatory. And here I can pass a location. Maybe I want to create the resource in the West US region. Okay, so now let me remove this code here. So I want to create only data factory resource. But now you see there is one error here. When I hover it, it is tell, trying to tell me that you cannot hard code the location like that. So what I do, I will create a parameter for location maybe, param, then location parameter, which is going to be string, and uh, I will keep the value here. So west US location, okay? And this location parameter, I'm going to use as a value for this location key in the BICIP code. So let me hit control S. Now, this is a very simple three to four lines of the code that can create the data factory directly. How it will create? Behind the scenes, it will generate the ARM template first. So if you want to know how to generate the ARM template for this, then you can use this Azure BICIP. You see the command what I'm typing it here. Uh, and then I can use this build. Okay. And I can use the build command to generate a BICIP. So if you want to see that, if I go to the one note here, you can see here. Uh, let me show you this Azure BICIP build then file, then the BICIP file name. If you use this command, then this command is going to generate the ARM template for you, if you want to practically see. So let's run this command now. az BICIP build, then hyphen hyphen file. Then here I have to call my BICIP file, which is sample.bicep. So when I run this code, it is going to create a JSON file in the same directory, like sample.json. So let me run this code now. When I hit enter, then this BICIP command line is going to come into picture along with the Azure CLI command line. And it will actually generate say sample.json file, which is the actual ARM template for creating data factory resource. Okay, so I think we misspelled. So we haven't typed the command correctly. So let me use Azure BICIP build, then file, then sample.bicep. So let me rerun this command now. 
now you can see that sample.json file got generated and if you see this is the actual ERM template code to create a data factory with that name actually but if you see it is a very lengthy code right uh, it is just a data factory let's assume it has a pipelines and all other things so this JSON file code will go hundreds of the lines actually but when you see the same resource in the BICIP file it is coming hardly four to five lines right so that is the advantage of BICIP BICIP will simplify the ARM generation process automatically uh, do we need to generate this ARM template from the BICIP file again and again before deployment then the answer is no we no need to generate the ARM template I just shown that for you to make sense that ARM templates are really huge comparing to the BICIP code but both does the deployment if I deploy this BICIP file also it is going to create the data factory resource and if I deploy this ARM template also it is going to create the data factory resource so let's deploy the BICIP file only so to deploy the BICIP file here in the terminal first we have to connect to Azure portal from the Azure CLI so az login that is a command I am going to use that will help me to connect to the Azure portal so let me hit enter this should open up the browser to log into the Azure portal. Here I am going to select my user account Mahir Basha at the right outlook .com, and this will connect me with the authentication process. We can see that authentication is successful. Going back to Visual Studio Code, once the authentication is successful, now I can run a couple of commands that can help me to take this BICIP file and deploy. So to deploy the BICIP file, I have to give a command what command so using Azure CLI if you see here az deployment group create then resource group parameter and pass the resource group name then template file flag then what is the uh, BICIP file name so that is what this is the code I have to use it to deploy the uh, BICIP file into the Azure portal so let me write the full command az deployment then group okay so let me recheck we no need to remember this whenever we google we can easily find them then here create command okay and then uh, after that we have to use the resource resource group name we have to provide okay so in which resource group i have to, i want to deploy okay resource group then which resource group i want to deploy right so let me go to the azure portal so maybe I want to deploy into the resource group called RG testing. Okay, so that is the resource group in which I want to deploy. So let me copy that and let's go to the Visual Studio code in this resource group. I want to deploy and then template, which is the template file. So I can use template hyphen file flag and here my template file name is sample by zip. So if I execute this command, then what it will does it is going to deploy our resource into this resource group uh, this BICIP file will get deployed and in that BICIP file we have a code to deploy the data factory resource so let me hit enter and let's wait for the deployment to happen here we can see deployment is running here we can see the same in the Azure portal as well inside the resource group I can go to the deployments under settings and I should see a process running there when I refresh this I think the process got completed just now you see that sample process which is successful at 7 19 p.m. now if I go back to the resource group I should see my data factory would have deployed already so let me go to the overview and you can see that my WAFASTADIS data factory got installed okay so how the deployment happened the deployment was happened because of this BICIP code so here I am simply write, written a three four lines of the BICIP code I haven't written a big JSON, ARM JSON like this. It's a very big, right? I just written a small code of BICIP code that is deploying me the entire resource. So this is the advantage of the BICIP code actually. So I hope you make sense how to work with BICIP and uh, how it will help you or benefit you to simplify your deployment processes. If you enjoy this video, hit the like button and subscribe to the my, my channel for more such good content. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.